It's our nature to care for ourselves. Why care for the trees? Because we care for our lungs which need fresh oxygen. Why care for the birds? Because we crave for bird songs to wake us up each morning. Why care about the rivers or the oceans? Because we need fresh water and food for generations to come. Why care about the snow-capped mountains? Because we love a break in the midst of nature. Why care for the environment? Because it's our nature. This Environment Day, let's protect our nature and build a greener tomorrow. Finally. Camping just like the oldest, huh? <laughs> Say here. Yeah. So, how's work? Building a new one, huh? <laughs> yeah. A sustainable housing project in Alwar. Today, the green living is a lot of demand. Tell me, how's life in Wall Street? <laughs> Bro, for me, it's green for dollars. Listen, it's a lot of food. Let's make something. Yes, let's make something. Oh, shikes. Don't bag the stove. Don't bag the stove. Now what, man? I think this time, I'll have to work with the grass. Hey, there's an idea. What? For the rain, the extra plastic sheet was left. Take it. Yes. Take that container too. Okay. What? What did you do again? If you want to eat, then take water from the stream. Go. Okay. What is this? This water is a lens. Sunlight will pass from here and focus on it. And this heat will boil the water. Oh, wow. Clean energy. Yes. But cooking will do it. Huh? Oh, it's not going to be the engineer, Babu. Hmm? Why don't you save it? Yes. Nature is always a savior. Hmm. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's
It's our nature to care for ourselves. Why care for the trees? Because we care for our lungs which need fresh oxygen. Why care for the birds? Because we crave for bird songs to wake us up each morning. Why care about the rivers or the oceans? Because we need fresh water and food for generations to come. Why care about the snow-capped mountains? Because we love a break in the midst of nature. Why care for the environment? Because it's our nature. This Environment Day, let's protect our nature and build a greener tomorrow. Finally. Camping just like the oldest, huh? <laughs> Say here. Yeah. So, how's work? Building a new India, huh? <laughs> yeah. A sustainable housing project in Alwar. Today, the green living has a lot of demand. Tell me, how's life in Wall Street? <laughs> Bro, for me, it's green safe dollars. Listen, I'm very hungry. Let's make something. Let's make something. Let's make something. Let's make Oh, shikes. Didn't pack the stove. Don't do it. Now what, man? I think this time we'll have to do the right work. Let's go. Let's go. There's an idea. What? I brought the extra plastic sheet. Let's go. Yes. Let's go to the container. Okay. What? Did you build it again? If you want to eat, then take the water from the stream. Let's go. Let's go. Bro, what is this? This water is a lens. The sunlight will pass from here and it will focus here. And this heat will boil the water. Oh, wow. Clean energy. Yes. But cooking will do it every day. Engineer Babu. You are a savior. Uh-huh. Nature is always a savior. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just stop the share before we start. We have been joined here by Mr. Ketan. Mr. Ketan, good evening and uh, welcome and thanks a lot for giving time and uh, speaking to us regarding your experience with leadership and other things to come, which we are uh, eagerly waiting to hear. Before we request you, there are a few formalities we need to go through. So I'll just start very quickly. Uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Khetan. Welcome amongst us is our joint treasurer, Mr. Vibhut Tandon. Uh, before I request Mr. G.M. Kapoor, who is going to moderate the session today and is going to be with Mr. Khetan, uh, talking talking to him after uh, the session starts and after he finishes the speech. Uh, may I request Mr. Vibhut Tandon, who is the joint treasurer of Calcutta Management Association, to kindly welcome the gathering and give a few uh, small uh, inaugural remarks. Sir, it's up Mr. Khaitan, Chairman of the SNK Group, members of the Executive Committee of Association, 
All of you have gathered here. Good evening, warm and a very good evening. Is in this initiative of ours of Calcutta Mission, I believe, is that there is sunlight, even when clouds are there, for all of us in our lives. When we hear personalities, people with tremendous amount of experience, people of the caliber of Sri Khaitan. we are able to realize that even in challenging times in trouble times and in good times alike it is always possible to lead a wonderful and successful corporate life to be successful in your career in whatever profession you are into if you are putting in the required amount of efforts putting in the required amount of sincerity devotion and you are following the, your quest of constant knowledge i believe that this is going to be a very very interesting session for all of you and i'm sure the insights shared by mr kathan are going to enlighten us and show us the path show us new uh, you know of course share share with us a lot of new wonderful ideas and empower us both on personal and professional levels to ensure that we are able to our desired goals i am happy to welcome shri khatan chairman of the snk group to this uh, Uh, thank very you, uh, session good evening and to to have very listeners of this entire session thank you very much thank you thank you mr tandon uh, thanks a lot uh am i audible am i visible yes yes mr khatan you are both audible and visible i will just take a minute to uh, introduce you formally but sure. before that i would like to welcome your homecoming to kolkata because that is where your roots were if i am not mistaken and uh, again of course been a long time but you may recall uh some common friends here i remember one arun seth in hastings who was my neighbor so we have spent time together it's been a long time as i said you may not recall but when i saw your name and your introduction i said i must say hello to you before we start the formal session so anyway welcome to back to calcutta kolkata it was calcutta then and uh, and i do hope and i'm sure we will have a very meaningful uh, interaction and uh, sir before mr uh, mr kapoor before you introduce just one small announcement for the participants yes, yes. since we will be having a, a we must be having a q and a session at the end we would request all of you to kindly put your questions on the chat box and i'll be sharing it with mr kapoor who is executive committee member of cma and he'll be taking up the questions at the end of the session So it's not all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Anirban. Uh, I just, uh, for, as I said, formal introduction. Mr. S. Uh, Mr. Anil Khatan, a chairman of the SNK Corporation, attended Vincent High School, Masuri, and thereafter completed his BCom degree and joined family business in 1976. He qualified his MBA from IMI Geneva in the year 1981. Mr Khetan has diversified business experience relating to jute paper pharmaceutical copper and steel apart from our international apart from his international operations uh, amongst the companies which are in his fold shalimar industries limited which is in jute and tobacco shalimar wires industry which is in paper uh, Su- sunil healthcare limited which empty hard gelatin capsules hpmc capsules for 
healthcare industry and ayurvedic formulations uh, alpha vitus opc private limited digital marketing and then the us operations doorcraft products incorporated customized kits for kitchen cabinet industry atlanta usa cosmo cabinets cabinets and doors again atlanta usa industrial experiences of 45 years and various offices he holds apart from his business he has been the former president of phd chamber of commerce and industry he is a member of the managing council of management ima independent director icsi rvo board of directors member of ypo gold member governing council new delhi institute of management chairman executive committee of a women innovator a uh, member of industry advisory board amity university distinguished member advisory council aas gon gsef africa asia scholars global network global south economic forum chairman governing board of indian social responsibility network that is a lot of activity i i am uh, wondering how he man manages to find time to fit everything in but there's more he's he fond of golf and tennis and i think this is why he is being able to manage everything his philosophy of life in addition to business expertise mr khetan has always had a great zeal to learn and experience the nature and life around him his favorite quote the only thing perfect in the world is nature has been truly followed by him in his personal life and adventures his hobbies of athletics sports and yoga keep a fit body reading and quest for learning ensure an agile and open mind and meditation and interest in music and theater bring about his creativity and calmness in temperament for him life is a continuous journey and he aims to achieve ex excellence in each sphere of life so we have a lot to learn from mr khetan and it's over to you we wait eagerly to hear thank you so much sir for uh, such a beautiful introduction yes you are very right it is homecoming because as we all say calcutta is calcutta and a calcutan at least i can speak for myself cannot live without calcutta and uh, it's my pleasure that you invited me so we could have a conversation times are very turbulent we have turbulent times on the economic front we have turbulent times on the financial front especially for the uh, medium and small corporates then we have political turbulence to whatever extent we would like to uh, describe it and lately we've seen you know the social turbulence also increasing a lot of hate monging a lot of unnecessary back and forth on the social media which is not needed because uh, i think it's better to always remain focused on on your purpose of life and keep moving towards your destination rather than getting defocused because the moment uh, we get defocused we are ruining our own future because god doesn't make our destiny we make our own destiny god has already taught us how to make our destiny the question is to walk on his road and leaders people who have succeeded in life they precisely do that I mean, leaders don't have two extra horns or two extra heads it's it's certain qualities they have they have a inner balance they have a gravitated a uh, thought process their personality itself is confident it's it's a bit difficult to you know shake them from inside they might look a bit perturbed from outside but inside 
I know they are very calm. Because taking you a bit spiritually, we each human being, there are eight powers which we have, which are inherent to our soul. For example, power to withdraw, power to decide, power to discriminate. So like that we have, I just mentioned, I mean, you know, three powers, power to accommodate. So like that we have four more powers. Now these are the eight powers. You can just uh, Google it and all the eight powers of the soul will come. And if you seriously think on those eight powers, in, and unless you use those powers, unless you strengthen those powers, it's very difficult to be a leader. Because there's a very famous English saying that if you don't use it, you will lose it. So we have to use the powers to exhibit the leadership skills. And that inner balance, that equanimity of the mind is needed. In today's volatile situation, to make a rational decision. I don't say all decisions can ever be 100% right. But when I say rational, I mean they are well thought out, well consulted, and from a 360 degree angle, who all will be affected are also involved so that the implementation becomes easier of the decision. Because one of the key factors of leadership which I'm very, very particular about. And that is implementation to the power of infinity. We human beings just talk, talk, talk. I say walk your talk. If you can talk, then you can also walk. And we jolly well can. But we have this mind of ours which makes us procrastinate, which makes us lazy. So we got to basically get out of all that. And now... I'm going to be very general in my, in my talk, so forgive me sometimes if I talk a bit on spirituality and then I'll get to hardcore business also. Now, let's say after the pandemic, what would a leader or an owner of a company be doing? He'd be seeing his order books, he'd be seeing his finances, he'd be seeing his uh, input material, what are his stock items, what are the vendors going to supply, his total finances, his manpower. So the entire aspect of all the functions of running an organization has to be seen by the owner to the extent of the size of the organization, which he had pre-pandemic. And during the learning period of the two years of pandemic, whatever that learning he wants to implement, then with that implemented learning, he has to put that whole organization structure because the world has changed after the pandemic. So the, so the leaders have to realize that and they have to make people working in companies also realize it. It's not that the people working in companies don't realize it. They realize it equally well. But in the context of the company, that is the job of the leader to handhold the people, especially now, because each one of us has gone through a lot of mental torture. It's okay for people who live in big houses, large houses, but what about people who live in a one bedroom apartment or a two bedroom apartment? How would they have lived? For the, uh, at least for the bad part of the corona, when the, you know, when the nation was going under major uh, lockdowns. Now, example, lockdown finish, factories have opened. Naturally, with this 360 degree view, then you just can't switch on and you'll have light. You'll have to then again restart the whole operation. And we all know the pain of restarting specially closed operations. It's very easy 
if from 100 you're running at 70 and then to take it back to 100. But it's very difficult from 100, you have to close down because of lockdown, you have no inputs and you have no customers. Workers can't come, so you can't produce. So naturally, you have to lock your factory down. I mean, and as it is, it is the law of the government. So you have to basically do it. Now, another general issue, which you have now observed, and that is worldwide inflation. Because worldwide inflation is really killing all economies. It's killing India. Yesterday, you saw the uh, CPI figure. That was again 7%. Uh, July was, I think, 6.3. August was 7. We've seen inflation abroad, huge oil price increases. So it is eating into the pockets of uh, average Indian. That will affect our demand holistically. I'm not saying for the entire sector of industry, services and agriculture, but certain sectors will definitely get impacted. And you can already see the FMCG sector today. I've read a lot of articles where they are feeling the impact of demand in this quarter. I'm also anxiously waiting, and I'm sure all of you are also, to look at the FMCG companies results for the July, October, I'm sorry, for the uh, July, September quarter. Now, due to this, the increasing pattern now, or the trend of interest rates, because America, again, I'm telling you, Fed is going to raise the interest at least by 0.75%. Because I think personally that Mr. Jerome Powell, uh, the Fed Reserve Chairman, I mean, if he does that, I mean, he's going to really create havoc in the whole world economy. Because today you cannot neglect America. And India also. In the next credit policy meeting, I think it's in the month, I think it's on 28th of September. So we are expecting again RBI to raise the repo rate by 0.5 or by 0.75%. And we in the corporate sector, this is just a small digression, but since you people are all belonging to the corporate sector, you know, what is quite hurting if, is that if Reserve Bank reduces the repo, let's say by point, uh, say by 50 basis point, the effective remission to the industry by the banks would be, would be only 30 basis points. So we always ask the question, why? That total reduction has to come to a trade industry and commerce. Banks have no right to keep that with them. But uh, so is the case. We've been talking from various industry associations for last, at least for five, six years, as I know, but still there is no impact. Anyhow, getting back to the main point. So one is we must all be ready for an increased interest regime for the next at least minimum three years, sector-wise impact. I don't want to get into sector-wise impact, but a lot of sectors have been usually impacted negatively. A lot of sectors have been impacted positively. So we won't get into that. One thing good, definitely, which happened during the pandemic, were the rollout of these Atman Nirbhar packages, about nine or 10 packages, which were rolled out. And in a process of huge reforms, the government announced, say, reforms in the space industry, reforms in defense, privatization of banks. Uh, uh, and I don't remember to tell you, frankly, but I had made a list of about, I think, 81 or 82 reforms they had I mean, done. Yeah, another big reform for us in the industry was the PLI scheme for, uh, for 13 sectors. Say our pharmaceutical business, we qualify for the, for the PLI scheme. And that's a good scheme that of my increased sales of the base year, 
which is uh, 1920. So if my sale was 100 rupees in 1920, and from financial year 23, 24, if my sale becomes say 120 rupees, then on that 20 rupees, the government at the end of the year will send a check to my company, a 6% of 20 rupees. And that incentive, the production linked incentive, uh, the company I think will get for six or for eight years. So that is why production linked incentive, more you produce of the products which are needed by the government of India to make India Atma Nirbhar, only those products have been taken and 18 sectors. I can tell for pharmaceutical sector because I am in pharmaceutical, electronics and, uh, and there are many more. Another good feature about our country, and that is why our country has been targeted by IMF and World Bank and most of the external agencies as the fastest growing largest economy. Our projection is India should realistically grow at about six, six and a half percent. And the prediction for China, which I read the last report, was about four, four and a half percent because China has really taken a big hit because whatever kind of policies uh, they, their government followed during the pandemic and so on and so forth. So in India, the biggest advantage we have today is political stability. And political stability is needed for business. And with Mr. Modi in power, uh, we have had political stability in the last eight years. And the biggest stability is the number of seats the present government has, which gives the present government immense respect, immense power in the eyes of all the developed countries. It is we, the voters, who have made whichever government comes in power, but if they come in power with majority, we are giving the government that authority to talk with power and not talk with any kind of a cowardice with any country on this planet. Coming now straight, I'll go function wise, I'll talk for a company. Now finance now, in the turbulent time. The biggest issue is working capital. How would you manage your working capital? That's a very key thing. And the best, I must say the government has done, is the ELCGS scheme, which I'm sure all of you are aware of, where uh, right for companies, for professionals like doctors, chartered accountants, and uh, I don't know who all, but they've covered the entire, entire gamut, that 20% of your sanction limit as on 29 February 2020, your banks will give you the money and government and the government of India stands guarantee and the promoter has to give no collateral, they have to give no margin. And that money in the, in the big scheme, which got announced later on, I think it was scheme number two, from then onwards, they made the amount repayable in five years. Uh, two years was moratorium, where you only paid interest. And then the remaining three years, you paid principal and interest. So that was, um, that is a tremendous uh, good a scheme and now we at Delhi are canvassing that uh, is um, I'm sorry that 20 was raised to 30. So now we are canvassing to the government that to still give boost if they could raise it to uh, 50 percent. And I think about a month ago you must have seen that 50,000 crores government had given in this scheme exclusively for the hospitality. Uh, sector, for the contact-based sector, hotels, 
etc hotels tourism etc so i think that was a great scheme and that scheme has gone a long way in reviving uh, because i'll tell you the figure out of 5 lakh crores i the last figure i read was that about 4 lakh 10000 crores had already been sanctioned and out of 4 lakh 10 uh, 3 lakh 90000 crore had already been disbursed and against that a government has also i think inbuilt uh, NPA factor that aapka sara paisa wapas nahi aayega. So I think uh, they've taken a figure of five or five or six percent. I don't remember the exact figure, but that's a good accounting they did. That they took the NPA factor into account also. That because of the turbulent time, there could be companies who would not be able to repay back, and in that case, the money the government would have to pay to the bank. So that was a great scheme. So one basic thing I would like to advise that a leader would first take care of the finances now in turbulent time. You have to catch one paisa by your teeth with the philosophy, one rupee saved is 10 rupees earned. Because during pandemic, especially I can say for myself, I found out there were such dirty fixed overhead expenses in my company, which were being incurred and which were not incurred in pandemic. And especially being in health sector, one of our companies, uh, we were an essential factory. So we ran 365 days during, during the, uh, you know, pandemic. So your this uh, what i was saying was your this uh, finance is extremely important and to help us the government has come out with this ecls scheme so that is one point and all leaders uh, i'm sure must have taken action in their respective companies to take advantage of this scheme another great thing in the turbulent time which has happened is the changing of the definition of the msmes now, from the plant and machinery based definition, which was up to 10 crores, you are an MSME, micro, small and medium. They have made it investment and turnover up to 250 crores now, a turnover and 50 crores investment in the net value of plant and machinery. If you come under that, you are an MSME. Based on that, Mrs. Nirmala Sitaraman had once said, that based on this new definition, uh, about 98% of the registered companies in India today would come under the definition of MSMEs. And MSMEs have found a great flavor because government knows that without MSMEs, India can never be a 5 or a 10 or a $30 trillion economy. And that is in every country. Small and medium businesses form the backbone of any economy in terms of manufacturing in terms of employments, so on and so forth. So please control expenses. And this has to be done for the next two, three years. It's something like you're in the aircraft and the aircraft has gone into a thunderstorm and the captain says, fasten your seat belts. That's all what we got to do fasten the seat belts and just keep walking because what has come bad good will also come so it is just night and day night and day there's nothing to get despondent about about anything coming to marketing now now since the economies are opening especially in india uh, as economies are opening now say the indian economy today indian economy is totally open now it's like, I mean, you don't even feel like, I don't even feel there. I mean, there is, I mean, I mean, there was a Corona. It, it would be wrong to say that. But what I'm saying is that the feeling of Corona is not there. Especially I can speak for, I mean, Delhi. Here, uh, here hardly there is a feeling that there is any Corona and everything is opened up. Everything is physical, virtual also is there. Because yeah, another big change I find is a hybrid culture where now you have both the physical and you have the virtual. 
Now coming to customers now, the customers basically, see when the economy is open, your suppliers will also open, your customers will also. Open. So it will be a spiraling effect. So that already has happened and all sectors have started to sell, started to buy, their collections have started to come because you what today? Aaj aapka business kya hota hai? Aap raw material kharidte ho, aapke paas technology hai, aapke paas factory hai. I'm talking from the factory point of view. Aapke paas factory hai. Aapne factory mein you have made the material, you have got a customer, you have sold the material, you have made some profit hopefully and you have collected the money and the cycle goes again on and on and on and on and on. That is why we call working capital because your capital is constantly moving. From raw material, it has moved into WIP. From WIP, it has gone into finished goods. From finished goods, it has gone into Sunday debtors. From Sunday debtors, again, it has gone into cash. And from cash, it has again gone into raw material. So it keeps on working in that circle. And today I'm saying in the turbulent time, it even if you break even or make a little bit of profit, but must remain liquid. If you can make your business that ideal situation, even at the cost of profit, but no loss, please. Otherwise, you will slowly, you know, wither away, slowly, I mean, die away. Another big issue now, which is very turbulent, and that's very turbulent, honestly, that is international market, our exports. You know, we shouldn't be happy with this figure of 413 billion and of this uh, highest exports and all because we have to factor in there uh, how much was the rupee devaluation the biggest problem in india's exports today is our product mix we are still major export is raw material we are not exporting finished goods value added what china is doing and you all know raw material is uh, maybe 50 percent of the total cost of the sales price what about the balance 50%, which is the value added that the China is taking over? Anyhow, things are now changing in India. Let's not get into the past. So, but international demand is going to be a factor. And I personally feel this will be a factor till 2024 because I, at the moment, don't see any resolvement in the conflict of Russia and Ukraine. There are no talks going on anywhere. And I'm of the strong view, of course, I think all of you might disagree with me or will disagree, but I think India will play a major role in settling the dispute between Russia and Ukraine. Another uh, major thing in marketing, which is, that is getting your money from your customers. Because see, unless you have a match of your debtors and your creditors, which you see as an asset liability match or a mismatch, is going to be quite difficult. If you collect in 90 days and you pay in 30 days, uh, it'll, it'll be quite difficult in this turbulent time. So even on that front, you have to take care of. Another big, uh, another big thing now is the government of India's uh, GEM portal, which is being run by the Ministry of Commerce. Now I think about a lakh or a lakh and a half crore a month of business of the MSMEs are being done on the GEM portal. The government is getting very aggressive. And as per my last conversation, they said they are also going to bring the private sector onto the GEM portal, especially the large companies. So I asked the gentleman. What is your definition of large company? He said, uh, you've heard the prime minister in his speech. He said, any company above 500 crores is a large company. So we have taken that, uh, so we have taken that figure that anything above 500 crores would be a large company. I mean, that is basically mentally, I mean, I, there is no legal writing or something like that. But I mean, in today's parlance, uh, whenever we go to the government, uh, then they say ki bhai jitne bhi aapke large company hai wo aapke gem portal pe hum wo sab ko so that will be great if even the private sector comes just imagine the amount of electronic marketplace 
अब यू अब अब आई आई एम श्योर ऑल ऑफ यू नो टुडे यूपीआई लाइक लास्ट मंथ द फिगर वाज 10.25 लाख करोड़ आई मीन द फिगर इज माइंड बॉगलिंग हाउ मच ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिजिटल पेमेंट इज टेकिंग अक्रॉस इन इंडिया आई मीन द होल वर्ल्ड इज अस्टाउंडेड दैट व्हाट इंडिया हैज डन नो कंट्री ऑन दिस on this planet has been able to achieve so far as the digital transactions are concerned 625 crores the entire population of the world transacted in the month of august and the total value was 10.25 lakh crores on the upi so these government portals are extremely effective and also i forgot to mention the treads portal there today if you have supplied your goods to a government company or even to a large company and you and you take your bill upload it on the portal of course you go to register first etc then you have a lot of banks on that portal so the banks come shopping and then the various banks give you the discounting rate and they immediately discount your bill i'm making it sound simple but you will have to go and understand this in detail so for the people who don't know you must go to the treads the the you know spelling is t r e a d s so you go to the treads portal and that is where you can get your cash payment by discounting your bill uh, if you follow the system but why i'm mentioning these portals is that they are very facilitative now into the new era of doing business and to help us tide over the turbulent times next biggest issue facing a leader today is productivity today productivity productivity and productivity is the only way to neutralize your increase of cost of course i'm not saying that you can uh, save the oil price has gone to 110 dollars well the productivity no matter how much it increases you might not be able to make it up but you understand what i mean that productivity is the one of the biggest tools in the hands of management by which cost per unit it can keep keep competitive and still be above water and uh, another issue is your logistics today you must have all heard our minister mr gadkari ji he says india's logistic cost is 14% of our gdp and he says i will bring it down to 8% which is the international cost in singapore and in europe or you know wherever uh, so he says by 2024 or 25 i don't remember he will bring it down to 8% that's a great thing and that we can see happening because at least in the north i see there is huge amount of uh, highways etc being uh, being and uh, being made and i think next year yeah is next year that delhi mumbai highway will start and that will be a tremendous one a 1300 km straight national highway uh, so we are all looking forward for that so once such kind of highways etc come and multi modal transports so the logistic cost has to come down because logistic cost doesn't make uh, factories which are landlocked competitive it's all right for factories in calcutta bombay or which are near the which are near the port another issue is our energy cost leaders will have to anticipate and they have already anticipated and they have already taken action considering how the oil prices and the fuel etc etc how to keep their energy cost but the issue is that how much can we in the private sector do it is for the government to see today why the why the discoms are in such huge loss a uh, 70000 crores were uh, was you know given to discoms so that they could pay to the jencos during the atmanirbhar i knew that was again bad i mean that was you know good money going after the bad money exactly that is what happened that 70000 crore would just vanished in 24 hours now again you see that discoms 
I think again that debt has piled up to one lakh fifty or one lakh seventy five thousand. You can see in your, you can see in Calcutta only how much will be the. Uh, I I don't know how much will be the you know debt of the discoms and your this and a CSC or whichever is the discom in Calcutta now. So anyhow, uh, from the industry viewpoint, now see they have a system that you can bid for power. They have an energy exchange in India. Now at now at ten o'clock, you can bid for power for the next twenty four hours. You have to place your bid hourly. That from twelve to one in the night, which is basically you know morning, I will consume twenty five thousand units. And for this twenty five thousand units, I am willing to pay eight rupees per unit or six and a half rupees per unit. So like that, you go for entire twenty four hours. Now that system was perf was working perfectly well, but what happened? The state government got pain in their stomach because, say, in Rajasthan, we were buying power from the energy exchange. We were getting power landed in our factory at five rupees fifty paisa per unit. The Rajasthan state power was seven and a half rupees per unit. So two rupees a unit was the difference. So government couldn't digest that because naturally, there were no customers for the government, especially the big industries. So what they did, a state has a two financial powers in their hand. One is cross subsidy charges, and one is additional surcharge. So they raised both of them, and now they have made the auction power. One and a half to two rupees more expensive than their own power. So now Mr. Modi has announced, and now the energy, uh, the electricity amendment bill, you know, is in the parliament. Again, they are going to have a fight over it. Let's see what comes out, because what they are promising to all of us now is that we can buy power like we can go and buy a shirt in a shopping mall. I'm making it sound too simple, but. You no, know, basically that is what has been conveyed. That now you are not dependent only on one or two government agencies. They are going to privatize the discom throughout the country, and they say you can give, you can buy power. Whoever gives you the best rates, and whoever gives you the service and quality. Let's hope that comes because these two items, on the profit loss side of any company today, is really hurting. One is the cost of logistics. Second. Is the energy cost on account of interest? I must say, government has done a great job. Of I'm talking of the years uh, of you know 80s and 90s and early you know and early 2000s. Now our interest is quite reasonable. Of course, it has started to increase because of the uh, American factor. And uh, another thing which is very good at, for India is see our income tax has come down so low now. Now, for new establishments, you know it is now fifteen percent, and now they have extended, provided you commission your your that project by thirty first March twenty twenty four, and that I'm telling you they will further increase if they see investments coming in. So you know, and and you can't get lower rates than fifteen percent. Let's face it, because even the universal income tax rate which America has initiated, so to avoid all this. Uh, Uh, you know this, you know round tripping of money, so on and so forth. Uh, so even I'm there, the countries have said 15 percent should be the minimum tax rate. So I think tax rate India has done a great job and and quite happy about it. And now comes on supply chain. Supply chain pandemic has taught us, ki Baba, make your supply chain very robust. Ek supplier pe dependent nahi. Make what make at least two or three good. Robust suppliers don't always look at prices. Sometimes they don't matter. By paying five percent extra, you I mean you will gain thirty percent extra in your net profit. Why? Maybe the quality of their suppliers is better. So I would always advocate go for go for quality. Like my father used to always tell me that look when you invest. Always invest in latest plant and machinery and technology because investment is only once. But your operating cost will be one second into three sixty-five days, and you have to be competitive. 
in terms of productivity has to be the highest, your quality has to be consistent. Then you are competitive, you maintain your market share, you maintain your margins. So, you know, that makes a lot of sense, uh, which, uh, which these elders, uh, you know, tell us from their experience. Now, coming to HR strategy. Now, you know, four labor codes have already been passed in parliament. All the 44 acts which were active of labor have been condensed into these four codes. You have code on industrial relations, where your industrial dispute act is the main act, and then you have and then you have other acts. I don't remember. Then you have code on safety, where the factories act is your main act. Then you have code on wages, where your payment of wages act is your main act, and then your bonus and workman compensation, so on and so forth. And the last is wage. Yeah. Then last, you no know, industrial relations safety. Yeah, then uh, code on uh, this uh, social welfare, where your provident fund, ESI, and, uh, and so on and so forth, I mean, they go in. So these four codes are now coming. The government will now notify, but now it again depends on which state government will implement, which state government will not implement. In this code, the government has done one thing, uh, after a lot of fights, uh, I mean, not fights, I would say, but a, a lot of discussions and negotiations, and the unions were quite strong on this point, that in code on industrial relation, the government has brought out a new clause, a concept of fixed term employment, which means I can hire somebody for five years, subject to again renewing the contract, for five years. I can again renew that for five years. I can keep on renewing it. But I have to pay him the normal social security, provident fund, ESI, whatever you pay to permanent workmen. But the government has said to the employers that we give you this facility that you will put a clause in the appointment letter that your services can be terminated without assigning any reason thereof. So that is the code which is coming, code on industrial relations. So on fixed term contract, and uh, I'm and I'm sure and I, and I know for it that all the foreign companies and the greenfield projects, the moment you find this is going to announce, you'll find all the companies going on fixed term fixed term employment contracts, because there you cannot have a contractor. You have to issue individual letter to individual, to the each individual working for you. So, and another thing which is good, which has happened in India, I don't know if you guys have noticed or not, that, you know, labor problems in India have reduced hugely. You hardly hear of any strikes or any lockouts these days. In my time in Calcutta in 70s and 80s and all, oh my God, it was, it was just terrible. But there's nothing now. I don't know the scene in Bengal, but at least the scene in North, uh, labor-wise, is uh, you know, quite good. So in the, in the turbulent times, I don't think anybody is going to have issues on labor because even the labor is affected. Nobody would like any disturbance in their income. R&D and innovation is another factor which we have to I mean, look at. Now, another factor which, uh, which all of you must, must see is, you know, government has a lot, have a lot of MSME schemes and therefore all sectors. And they have this MSME champion portal which was launched by the prime minister during the pandemic. It, you can just, you know, Google it, MSME champion, and it'll just take, and then just go onto the portal. You get everything there. You even get suggested projects there. Government has even given you suggested projects that you can maybe have a look at this project and this project and this project, etc., etc. So go and have a look at that. Another major issue will come for all leaders now is quality. Quality of your finished product. Because we must have that attitude that once the finished product leaves my factory gate, it means it is like a BMW or a Mercedes Benz going and quality being taken for granted. So India, slowly, slowly, we have to work towards that. Otherwise, we can talk anything. 
but until you build that trust which might take 15 years 20 years because you know trust of quality is not built overnight but it has started now so we must all concentrate and especially the msmes otherwise i'm telling you we are going to die our own death if we don't focus on quality because today even you and i when we buy don't we only buy quality agar humko 1% nuksan ho jata hai we all make such a you and cry so when we want quality so does our customer and why can't we give quality and that's why you know i remember that dialogue in the film uh, you know three you know in three idiots where amir khan says that work for excellence and balance everything will uh, basically you know take care of itself money will take care of itself excellence bring excellence in your attitude bring excellence in your work and always have because see you have hum aapko typical bolta hai ek typical example aap kisi ko 100 rupya tankha de raha hai koi hai wo 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 earner 70 rupya ka kaam karega koi khali 100 rupya ka kaam karega aur koi jo ambitious लाइक डायनामाइट ही वॉन्ट्स टू गो हेड वो एक सौ बीस रुपए का काम करे क्योंकि उसको उसको जल्दी है लाइफ में आगे जाने की प्रोग्रेस करने की हम नहीं कहते कौन अच्छा है कौन बुरा है हम आपको खाली फैक्ट बता रहे हैं कि इस टाइप के इंसान है मतलब हम सब है इस टाइप के वी मस्ट इवेल्युएट आर सेल्स अनदर बिग इश्यू नाउ कमिंग फॉर द लीडर्स ज नेटवर्किंग आज के दिन अगर आप नेटवर्क नहीं हो ना यहां इंडिया में फैक्ट्री चलाना इज इम्पॉसिबल बिकॉज यू वॉट एवर दे डू आई आई ऑलवेज टेल द गवर्नमेंट अरे भैया ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस टू वी हैव सीन हाउ वर्ल्ड बैंक इज नाउ टोटली डिसमेंटल बिकॉज इट बिकेम लाइक अ स्कैम यू सो आई मीन लास्ट टाइम वॉट वॉट इज ऑल हैपन लेट मी नॉट गेट इन टू दैट so we are saying make cost of doing business look at cost of doing business and ease of doing business aapne sab kuch matlab kiya but fir bhi today i'm telling you the compliances are too many and still there are every day laws i mean today for a listed company before the agenda if it was let's say 20 pages in a in a board meeting now it is 150 pages i mean the agenda size has increased so much i really pity the company secretaries and the compliance officers and especially on the hr front also for the you know for the factory manager a lot of compliances have definitely increased now to, now let me conclude uh now the way i see india going forward i see in india you will find anchor companies already now coming in now let's say today वेद वेदांता फॉक्सकॉन इज कमिंग इन वन लैख सिक्सटी थाउजेंड क्रोर्स इन्वेस्टमेंट इन गुजरात इन सेमाई कंडक्टर फेसिलिटी आई थिंक इट्स अ फैंटेस्टिक इन्वेस्टमेंट सो यू विल हैव सच बिग इन्वेस्टमेंट कमिंग इन एंड अराउंड दीज इन्वेस्टमेंट यू विल गेट सर्कल्स ऑफ एम एस एम ई इन्वेस्टमेंट बिकॉज दे विल ऑल बी यू नो फीडिंग इन एज वी कॉल द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अ गीगा फैक्ट्री यू हर्ड इलॉन मस्क हेज पुट अप सेवन गीगा फैक्ट्रीज इट्स द सेम थिंग that this vedanta project of semiconductor it is nothing but a giga factory now 1000 acres they have got free from gujarat now i don't know how many other how many acre, now with so much of land now they will take along with them all their vendors who are supposed to supply to them and they'll make a whole industrial community so it will become a big cluster so i see that trend coming in second of course digitization a less said the better india is really growing great dance another great thing is the young population is doing great the startup culture already 78000 startups have been registered at you know dpiit i in you know asochem we did a we did a startup round we didn't come to calcutta but we went to tire two cities uh, 12 cities where we had the startup pitches and i'm telling you amazing ideas uh these uh, you know startups have then we have an effective government a government who is spending on infrastructure 
today why you see india's economy is going uh, about six and a half seven percent it's because of the spend on infrastructure because the multiplier of infrastructure is 20 and if you spend one rupees the effect is of 20 rupees because you activate so many other industries so many other sectors around you because they have to be your supply chain so i mean that's a great thing which government is doing because they have committed uh, in 2019, when they came back in power in their manifesto, they had committed 120 lakh crores they will spend on infrastructure uh, till, uh, yeah, till 2024. So all this infrastructure spend, which you see in budget like this budget was seven and a half lakh crores. So all that is being uh, actualized against the budgeted of 110 lakh crores. And, and that we are seeing on the ground. Another thing the government has to take care of I had already mentioned in detail was the export product mix. The export infrastructure still needs improvement. The ports need gross improvement. The turnaround time of the ships have to further reduce. Like in Singapore, it's only, I think, five or six hours. But in India, still, it's about you know three to four days. Now, tire two and tire three, say Bardwan, Asunsol. You must be re I mean, realizing there they are developing hugely. So those are the cities now which are going to be the future of India. And a lot of GDP contribution is going to come from these cities. Now you see the credit cards and debit cards. It's been a huge usage now. And the and the credit growth, which I'm going to tell you, is was about 15.1%. In that credit card is one of the major reasons of the credit growth in India. Because, you know, if you, if you, I mean, if you swipe a credit card, it is, it is, uh, you know, credit. That's why I'm not talking about debit card. Now, the impact of e-commerce, Amazon, Flipkart, I mean, today, housewives, I mean, even in a village, in their own language, they'll say, amma jaan se mangalo. So, you know, it's become so easy now uh, that sitting at home, uh, you get whatever you want delivered to you. Uh, so e-commerce is really now taking the case. Contact-based sectors are doing usually well. In fact, the hotels are sort of penalizing us as to why the pandemic came. I'm telling you, no hotel, I mean a five-star hotel north of Delhi is less than 25 to 30,000 rupees a day uh, rent and plus 18% GST and your lunch and dinner. And... Uh, Another thing I have noted is that now we have seen investors are now buying properties. They are investing. So that thing, one thing is good. Housing sector has picked up. Now, broadly, the corporate's balance sheet, even the government balance sheets are improving. Now, if you see, you know, you must see this interesting figure. Uh, if you've not seen it, just go to Google and see it. What is the corporate profit, total profit, of corporate India as a percentage to GDP. Last year was the highest. It was 11.3%. I forget the exact figure. I think it was 11, 11 and a half lakh crores or I mean 10 and a half lakh crores, something like that. So that was a, a corporate profit of the listed companies, which the companies, which the government could basically, you know, get their, uh, get the, you know, hands or their figures or whatever. So another thing which will now come is a CAPES focused, a CAPEX, capital expenditure focused fiscal policy. And that is very important. That jo apne ko chahiye, usi pe capital expenditure ho, or focused capital expenditure ho, or ye focus rahe ki timely project commission ho. Aaj bhi, even in Modi government today, I can tell you 434 projects are delayed, and the cost of the delay is 4,38,000 crores. So we, the country can't afford such things. We can't. Because the size of our budget is too small. What is the size of India's budget? 24, 25 lakh crores? Nothing. Interest you are paying 8 to 9 lakh crores. You need at least 40 lakh crores. Unless you get 40 lakh crores of revenue, it's not possible to keep the uh, budget balanced. Country is working towards it. We, we all have to work towards it. There's no point complaining. But I'm just raising an issue 
for all of us to seriously consider as a citizen of India and in view of what the Prime Minister is now focusing us on is our duties towards the nation rather than only asking for our rights. Another major issue is India's capacity utilization in industry has gone up after the pandemic. Now it is running at 76.5% on an average. Before the pandemic, I remember it was at 75%. Now the impending, the impending festive season after the after the Shraddh period are over, Navratras are all starting, you know, all in Mal of Calcutta, then all Diwali, Christmas. So now all the festival season is starting. So I'm quite hopeful and bullish that, uh, you know, things will start moving and, and especially the small, small companies would start doing much, much better. I've mentioned about the credit growth uh, at about 15.1%. And so in short, that is all what I had to say. I don't know if I made any sense, but uh, don't worry. I mean, I am very bullish about my country and I'm very happy to be a born Indian. And uh, I feel very comfortable uh, being an Indian. And I know it, that India is going to make it. And every country had their time. After 1945, it was a time of United States. Till then it was primarily the United Kingdom. Then it was China. From 89, if you see, the GDP of India and China in 88 was exactly the same. But then China did what it did. Doesn't matter. India is doing it now. And we will do it. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you, Calcutta Management Association. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Khetan. It was indeed a great learning experience. And uh, what I would like to just add is I see a lot of optimism in you. And that is infectious. I think we all... Uh, listeners, uh, participants would get the feeling that things are not so bad as some people make out to be. And there is, while there the times have been turbulent, but yes, the 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 light is definitely shining now. The the light is at the end of the tunnel, and we do hope to see better days. And as you have mentioned, I think the government is also trying to be on the right track. And uh, I am sure we will get uh, where we are headed. A couple of questions which have come through, which I will ask. Uh, uh, during the turbulent times, when all leaders are looking at cost control, do you think the spend on learning and development or training would also get curtailed by organizations? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I feel uh, evolved company would never do it. Because to me, learning is an investment. It is not an expenditure. Mm -hmm. So I mean, so I mean that is the answer to that question. Okay, fine. I, I hope that answers the question. And uh, the next question is about multitasking. Uh, you know, in in the pandemic, a lot of multitasking had to be done. Uh, so there's this gentleman who's asked, uh, do you think extensive multitasking by an individual employee impacts the productivity negatively? Oh, yes, definitely it does. It is not humanly possible to multitask on a, on a consistent basis. Even if you can do it for 96 hours, I think you're a superhuman. So I think it's better to always remain focused in life because a focused person goes places. And a scattered person is always a multitasked person. So you can't go with a scattered and a cluttered mind. So to answer your question, I think it is definitely negative and you should avoid multitasking and you should remain focused. And I've already coined this word like the, like, you know, Mahabharat, ki Arjun ka focus, baki sab bogus. So keep your focus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very succinct. Uh, I, I think uh, we will all uh, go back home with a lot of takeaways. And I'd like to convey my sincere thanks 
to uh, you, of course, to start with for sparing your time and sharing your vast experience and knowledge. Uh, I would also like to thank AIMA as well as the participants who have uh, been with us all through and their organizations and institutes and the patrons of CMA. Uh, Tata Steel and Tata Tiscon, who are the sponsors of this event, I convey my special thanks. So thank you very much, Mr. Khedan. And if you're ever in Calcutta, it'd be a great pleasure to catch up with you and maybe talk of old times. Where is your office? My office is a CMA or my, my personal office? No, I mean, you know, CMA. CMA offices in uh, the, the Bengal Chamber buildings. Okay, Bengal Chamber. Right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. So much. Good night, everyone. It's our nature to care for ourselves. Why care for the trees? Because we care for our lungs which need fresh oxygen. Why care for the birds? Because we crave for bird songs to wake us up each morning. Why care about the rivers or the oceans? Because we need fresh water and food for generations to come. Why care about the snow-capped mountains? Because we love a break in the midst of nature. Why care for the environment? Because it's our nature. This Environment Day, let's protect our nature and build a greener tomorrow. Finally. Camping just like the oldest, huh? <laughs> Say here. So, how's work? Building a new India, huh? <laughs> yeah. A sustainable housing project in Alwar. Today, the green living has increased a lot of demand. Tell me, how is life in Wall Street? <laughs> Bro, for me, it's green shift dollars. Listen, it's a lot of hunger. Let's make something. Let's make something. Let's make something. Let's make something. Oh, shikes. Didn't pack the stove. Don't do it. Now what, man? I think this time, I'll have to do the right work. Hmm. 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 One idea. What? To save the rain, the extra plastic sheet, take it. Yes. Take that container too. Okay. What? What did you build again? If there's food, then take the water from the stream. Go. Okay. Bro! Huh? Yeah. Bro, what is this? This water is a lens. The sunlight will pass from here and focus on this side. And this heat will boil the water. Oh, wow. Clean energy. Yes. But cooking, bro, it's too good. Huh? Bro, what is this? 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 Engineer Babu, hmm? you are a savior. <laughs> uh huh. Nature is always a savior. Mm -hmm.